This is Land of Havilah, Second Chronicles 24. Seven-year-old Joash is on the throne of Judah, the ninth king of the house of David. Jehoiada the high priest is his guardian. Going back to the day Athaliah slaughtered the house of David, an ant hid Joash and his nurse in a bedroom, 2 Kings 11.2. The ant's husband was Jehoiada the high priest. They relocated the boy and his nurse to the secrecy of the temple, where the nurse continued with him for the next six years, 2 Kings 11.3. His father was King Ahaziah, now dead, but what about his mother? Verse 1. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibiah of Beersheba. Comment in verse 1, his mother was Zibiah from Beersheba, which is in the far south of Judah, but that's all we know about her. Since she was mother of an heir, Athaliah might have killed her, as would have happened to Bathsheba in 1 Kings 1.12. As far as we know, Zibiah wasn't around for Joash, but Yahweh took care of him. Verse 2. Joash did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes all the days of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he became the father of sons and daughters. Comment in verses 2 and 3, Jehoiada definitely served as a father figure because he took two wives for Joash. He was the power behind the throne in Joash's youth, and coming up he was powerful in Judah the rest of his life. However, it wasn't inappropriate because he pledged in the last chapter that this would be Yahweh's kingdom, not his own. Quote, Jehoiada made a covenant between himself, all the people, and the king that they should be Yahweh's people, end quote. Coming up, Joash is old enough to think for himself now. He's aware of the broken down condition of Yahweh's house because for one thing, it was his boyhood home and he wants to restore it. Verse 4. After this, Joash intended to restore Yahweh's house. He gathered together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out to the cities of Judah and gather money to repair the house of your God from all Israel from year to year. See that you expedite this matter. However, the Levites didn't do it right away. Comment, the Levites ignored him. Jehoiada should be on top of this, but he's not. We seem to be in a transition period where the young Joash has developed a will of his own. He's adult, he's married, but Jehoiada is reluctant to give him the respect of the adult king that he is. So coming up, there's some friction between them. Verse 6, The king called for Jehoiada the chief and said to him, Why haven't you required of the Levites to bring in the tax of Moses, the servant of Yahweh, and of the assembly of Israel, out of Judah and out of Jerusalem, for the tent of the testimony? Comment, tent of the testimony is another name for the temple. It originated as a tent. Coming up, the explanation of why the temple needs repair, verse 7. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up God's house, and they also gave all the dedicated things of Yahweh's house to the Baals. Comment, the sons or grandsons of Athaliah and her husband, King Jehoram, conducted an official looting and vandalization of Yahweh's house in favor of establishing a temple to the Baals. Coming up since the priests and Levites are negligent in funding the repairs, Joash came up with a solution. Verse 8, So the king commanded, and they made a chest, and set it outside at the gate of Yahweh's house. They made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring in for Yahweh the tax that Moses, the servant of God, laid on Israel in the wilderness. All the princes and all the people rejoiced and brought in and cast into the chest until they had filled it. Comment in verse 9 regarding the tax Moses collected. This seems to be the census tax commanded by Yahweh in Exodus 30. Moses collected that tax during construction of the tabernacle, and it was to be used for the tabernacle. Moses collected it a second time during the second census of Numbers chapter 1. There's no actual mention that he collected it the second time, but it's implied that he did because he did conduct the second census. However, in the history of Israel after that, there's no record of the tax being imposed again. The law left it open to be collected, and in verse 9 we just read, Joash decided to resurrect it. So in verse 8, there's no mention of a census, and it was fine if they didn't take one. They were under no obligation to take one, but... They placed a box outside the gate of one of the courtyards, bored a hole in the top of it, 2 Kings 12, 9. And in verse 10 that we just read, the people gave with rejoicing until they had filled it. 
The tradition was still in place in the time of Jesus that there was a collection box at the temple. The widow put her two mites into it, which was all she had to live on, Mark 12, 42. So starting with Joash and going forward about 800 years off and on, contributing to the box was a meaningful tradition in Israel. When Joash established it, the routine with the box was that, verse 11, whenever the chest was brought to the king's officers by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money, the king's scribe and the chief priest's officer came and emptied the chest and took it and carried it to its place again. Thus they did day by day and gathered money in abundance. Comment verse 11, whenever the box was rather full, they emptied it in the presence of the king's scribe to represent the king and the chief priest's officer to represent the high priest. This kept the counting of the money on the up and up with checks and balances. Verse 12. The king and Jehoiada gave it to those who did the work of the service of Yahweh's house. They hired masons and carpenters to restore Yahweh's house, and also those who worked iron and brass to repair Yahweh's house. So the workmen worked, and the work of repairing went forward in their hands. They set up God's house as it was designed and strengthened it. Comment, they restored the temple, quote, as it was designed, end quote. With the mention of iron and brass in verse 12, it's doubtful they restored it to its original golden glory, but at least they made it functional. The temple's about 135 years old now, so aside from vandalism by Athaliah's sons, there was some age-related deterioration, not to mention there was the Egyptian looting, 2 Chronicles 12, 9, and likely Philistine and Arabian looting, 2 Chronicles 21, 17. So the temple's been through the ringer. Coming up after they did the repairs, there was money left over, verse 14. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada, from which were made vessels for Yahweh's house, even vessels with which to minister and to offer, including spoons and vessels of gold and silver. They offered burnt offerings in Yahweh's house continually all the days of Jehoiada. But Jehoiada grew old and was full of days, and he died. He was 130 years old when he died. They buried him in David's city among the kings because he had done good in Israel and toward God and his house. Comment, the old priest wasn't perfect, but it was a good epitaph for him that he was buried among the kings. Coming up, there are some idolatrous leading men in Judah who are glad Jehoiada's dead and want to make some changes. Verse 17. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and bowed down to the king. Then the king listened to them. They abandoned the house of Yahweh, the God of their fathers, and served the Asherah poles and the idols. So wrath came on Judah and Jerusalem for their guiltiness. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again to Yahweh, and they testified against them, but they wouldn't listen. Comments in verses 17 to 19, Joash never grew up in terms of setting himself to serve Yahweh alone. When Jehoiada was gone, he listened to idolaters and rejected Yahweh's prophets. Now another prophet will arise in Judah, this one being Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, the same Jehoiada who did so much for Joash. Verse 20. The Spirit of God came on Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, and he stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, Why do you disobey Yahweh's commandments so that you can't prosper? Because you've forsaken Yahweh, he's also forsaken you. They conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of Yahweh's house. Thus Joash the king didn't remember the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but killed his son. When he died, he said, May Yahweh look at it and repay it. Comment. Coming up, Yahweh will answer Zechariah's prayer to repay it. It was less than a year, verse 23. At the end of the year, the army of the Syrians came up against him, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people, and sent all their plunder to the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, and Yahweh delivered a very great army into their hand, because they had forsaken Yahweh, the God of their fathers. So they executed judgment on Joash. 
Comment in verses 23 and 24, a small company of men from Syria defeated Judah, killed its leading men, and looted it because Yahweh delivered the great army of Judah to them. Coming up, Joash survived the Syrian raid, but he's not well, and Yahweh is not protecting him. Speaking of the raiders, verse 25, when they had departed from him, for they left him very sick, his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest, and killed him on his bed, and he died. They buried him in David's city, but they didn't bury him in the tombs of the kings. These are those who conspired against him, Zabad the son of Shemaith, the Ammonitus, and Jehoshabad the son of Shimrith, the Moabitus. Comment, there's no mention of the assassins' fathers, but their mothers were foreigners, one an Ammonitus and the other a Moabitus. In verse 25, they killed Joash on his bed, quote, for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest, end quote. Sons, plural. So we find out for the first time that Joash killed multiple sons of Jehoiada. It's unthinkable on any level, killing the prophets and priests of Yahweh, but after what Jehoiada did for him to kill his sons like that? Speaking of Joash, verse 27. Now concerning his sons, the greatness of the burdens laid on him and the rebuilding of God's house, behold, they're written in the commentary of the book of the kings. Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. Comment. In First and Second Kings, there's not much more additional information about Joash, so First and Second Kings don't fit the description of the book mentioned in verse 27. It must be a lost book. Second Chronicles 25 is next at landofhavilah.net.